Hey everybody, this is a video that has been requested many times. I just want to say before I start that I don't claim to be a professional sound engineer or a producer. I just don't like to pretend that I'm an expert. I still think you can get some really good tips here because a lot of them have been learned to me by people that actually know what they're doing. But I just see that too often on YouTube, people pretending to be an authority on something and I'm not in this case. But I think this might be interesting for you to watch anyway. So I want to talk about and show you how I record guitars and how I mix stuff in my DAW. I'm using Logic Pro, but most of the stuff that I'm talking about will work on different DAWs as well. So the song we are taking a look at is a intro track that I made for my bare-faced uh, cabinet video. I've gotten some good feedback on that one and I'm quite happy with it myself. So let's jump into it. I want to show you some of the song first and then we can go into the different tracks and I can talk to you how I recorded them and what I'm doing in the DAW with plugins and stuff like that, okay? Okay, so there you have it. Uh, let's start with um, uh, the first guitar, and that's guitar right on the top here. Uh, that is my Fano PX6 with the neck pickup. And I think uh, we can listen to it, but I think I recorded that with not a lot of gain. That was like just the tone that I got in the room first when I started to make this song. And that was just like really powerful sound with not a lot of gain. So we can just listen to that in solo really quick. Uh, I've panned it to the right, but when we're listening now, I'm putting it in the center so we can hear it a, a bit better. <laughs> So this is recorded with just one microphone and that's the Lewitt MTP440 uh, dynamic microphone. It's quite similar to the SM57. This one has more low end and I definitely prefer this one over the SM57. When it comes to mic placement, uh, that is really important of course. And that's something that I've been struggling with for many years and that was actually one of the reasons why I got a Torpedo Live because that's so much easier to use but the thing is with mic placement you just need to continue and try and move the mic until you have a sound that you like. That's the only way to do it. Of course later you will have more experience on where to place it. I usually uh, put it on like a tiny bit of axis not like full tilt but um, a tiny bit on the side and on the side of the cone. I don't like it to be too bright. Sometimes I actually tend to move it too much from the cone, so I need to remember to put it closer. Uh, but yeah, you just need to record a lot of guitars and continue to move that mic. That's the only way you can get any good at mic placement. And watch videos, of course, but Still, you need the experience. Let's see at the plugins. So the first one I'm always um, starting with is an EQ. You can see that I'm uh, basically doing a high pass at the beginning, cutting everything below 100 hertz. Uh, I could probably shave off more here. I see people do that. Um, I tend to be a bit fooled that I want more uh, low frequencies in my tone. Uh, so I only removed a bit uh, in this area because it tends to be r very boomy, but I've seen people shave off a lot more than this. I also, I'm also cutting off 
uh, some high frequencies and also boosting them just a tiny bit. This is something that I learned from someone that actually knows how to do this. And you can see some dips around here and that is basically just me listening and removing. So we can do that just a tiny bit. Uh, As you can hear, that is a really bad thing to have there, so I'm removing it. The next uh, plugin is a really good one from um, Oak Sound. I think that's the way you say it. It's called Soothe, and it also helps removing bad frequencies, but in a different way, and I don't have enough knowledge to even tell you what it's doing. It's kind of like an automatic remover of bad things. There you go. Um, yeah, so let's see how it sounds before and after the suit plugin. You could hear, probably hear some clipping there. That's just the plugin um, working on what to do. Just makes the sound better. Simple as that. And at the end, I have my favorite uh, compressor from Waves, the CLA-3A. Uh, I just like the sound of this one, and it's also pretty simple to use. I know how a compressor works, but I'm still not too good to dial it in when you have like all the different parameters. This one is really simple, and it sounds good. I use this on basically everything. The next track is the intro track. And uh, I believe what I did here, I just took down the guitar from like the first track and I put it here because I wanted to do some different uh, stuff on it. So you can see it has the same stuff in the beginning, the EQ, Soothe and the compressor. Then I have uh, the Valhalla Vintage uh, Verb, which is my favorite reverb plugin. By the way, let's listen to that one first because that's kind of important. So I basically wanted a sound that was a bit different, a bit lo-fi, and I just have not just a tiny bit but quite a lot of reverb on that one. Uh, you can hear that there's a slapback delay on it that is also from a plugin. And the last thing on there is the Waves Factory cassette, which simulates a old cassette, basically. So you can hear it first without that one. Uh, really just sounds like the first track uh, with a slapback. Uh, let's add in the cassette. Yeah, just a simple trick that makes the intro stand out a tiny bit. Okay, then it's the second guitar. So on this track, I or on this song, I decided to only have one guitar on the left side and one on the right side, uh, except from the chorus, that is. I'm not doing two tracks on each side. Some people do that. I often find that to be a bit too much. This is the second uh, guitar, the, the guitar on the left, and I'm still using the same amp, the Friedman Dirty Shirley. I don't think I said that. It's the Friedman Dirty Shirley into the barefaced uh, cabinet. And I moved the mic just a tiny bit to get a different sound. And I also used a different guitar. That's something that I recommend that you use different guitars for different tracks in one song. So I think on this one, I used my, my TMG Cashmere, which is a you know, Les Paul type guitar. And it has more gain, and I'm also playing on the bridge pickup. Let's hear that one. It actually has a lot more gain, and you're getting a bit more definition 
uh, from this one still, even though it's more gainy because it's brighter sounding and on the bridge pickup. Let's just hear it together with the first guitar. I'm doing basically the same stuff with plugins on this one. Sounds pretty good. I can definitely tell by listening to it in um, solo now that it's not that tight. That's also something that is probably way more important than everything else. Could have played it better. Guess it's good enough. Um, then we are going into the chorus, and I just wanted to add something more to the um, to the guitar sound. So I I recorded a guitar with a really like honky mid uh, tone and I think this is just yeah it's uh, only plugins because I had taken down everything at this point and I was probably mixing and I wanted to have one more guitar so I'm using bias effects too let's see here what I'm doing it's kind of exciting for me to look see as well yeah not now I'm using a tweed uh, Lux, that's something that I often do and you can see on the EQ here that it has quite an aggressive <laughs> mid curve to it. Uh, let's see, I, I think I'm just playing the same riff but let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Yep, uh, not necessarily a sound you would use on your own, but together with the other ones, I think it sounds pretty cool. So let's listen to the chorus with just the two original guitars and I'll add in the third one as well so you can hear it. It's basically just a really hard push in in the mids and that's it and after the bias effects um, plugin I'm doing the same EQ or the same EQ suit and compression and also uh, one thing I, I, I recorded this thing in my studio and there I have uh, two really good Dyne Audio Lead 7s uh, monitors I mixed first there I often do that then I took it home and then mixed on my setup here where I have the same audio interface, the SRI2 from Fluid and also two smaller monitors from Fluid. So it's a really good reference and if you have the option, try to listen on different monitors. That's not necessarily that easy, but I find that to be a great way to work. And when I got home and started to mix, I still felt that something was missing on the chorus. I wanted to have more than just that mid push. I kind of wanted the mix to open up a bit. So I did something that I've seen a lot of producers do, and I've heard this on many records. And it's not necessarily something that I wanted to do on every song, but I added two acoustic guitars, one on the right side and one on the left side, where again I basically played the same riff and I turned it down quite low in the mix. I don't want people to hear that it's necessarily an acoustic, but I just want like the, the definition or like the attack you get from like the plectrum on the strings. So let's uh, just listen to them and see how they sound. Yeah, and they sound, I heard that now, it, they sound pretty uh, like old and vintage sounding and that's because I'm using the cassette plugin once again. I remember recording this at home here. I was using my wife's um, big jumbo guild acoustic and she has a 63 Gibson LG Zero, like a smaller one and I used different ones for the right side and the left side. Let's try 
to listen to the mix without the acoustic guitars and with. Kind of a simple trick that sometimes works. I think it worked really well in this uh, situation. Let me see, the next step is bass. And since I don't have a bass amp at the moment, I haven't had that for many years, so I'm always using uh, bass amp too. Uh, if you've seen my Queens of the Stone Age video, I'm also using uh, this plugin, and I think I'm using the same, yep, I'm using the same amp. That's the one that I always go to, the blue line in um, Bias Amp 2, which is an Ampeg amp. So I'm also doing um, some EQ here. I found that I'm just using like one of the presets in Logic. That works really well for me at least. This is also a plugin that I use a lot and that's the Chris Lorge. What is he called again? Lorge? Algae? No idea. CLA bass from Waves. It has some options and I really like that one. Let's see how it sounds. And I think I'm using my Sterling bass on this one. This is definitely not my Jack Cassidy bass. And drums, I use Easy Drummer too. Never been like a huge fan of MIDI drums, but sometimes you have to, to use that. I don't have a drummer on hand all the time. So let me see here what drum kit I'm using. Modern Vintage. And here's a trick that I learned from, again, someone that knows what they're doing. I'm doing like a parallel compression thing on a auxiliary track and that really helps. Let's see how it sounds before and after. Yeah, this is without. And as you can see, it's quite aggressive. Uh, settings on my presser. I think the reason why I've done this is I read a an interview with Kevin Parker, is that his name? From Tame Impala. And what he said just really resonated in me because he said that he's always running drums with some sort of distortion or like just cranking up the compression because when you are in a room next to a drum kit, it's often extremely loud and your perception of that sound is often kind of compressed in your ears so it, the sound is almost too much for you and he's trying to replicate that using either software or hardware and i think that's just a really smart thing to do so that's probably what i've been trying to do at least here so that's basically all the tracks on this uh, tune it's a really short and simple tune so I don't need anything else. I could have more guitars that was different from like the main riff. I'm basically playing <laughs> the same riff on all the different guitars. It's cool to have something different to counter the parts, but for this song, I just did that. Let's take a look at the stereo out. Uh, I'm doing some pseudo mastering. This is definitely something that I'm just doing really simple and I'm not sure what I'm doing. EQ Final Mix Rock preset from Logic. Let's hear it without. Brightens it up a bit and makes it sound more defined, I guess. I'm also running a uh, multi presser. Again, Final Rock Compressor just using the presets. I'm also using this plugin from Waves, the J. 37 tape machine adds something not a lot but i think it added something so that's probably why i used it we can try to listen to the mix with and without
Yep, and at the end I have a limiter. I often set the out ceiling to minus 0.1 dB because that's something that I believe YouTube prefers and I kind of adjust the threshold by ear. I often feel that if you push that too much you get this, I call it compression dizziness. I have no idea if that's a real term but sometimes when you have something that is compressed too much it kind of almost feels weird to listen to and I almost get dizzy by it so I try to stop before I get to, to that point. All right, I think that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and even more so if you have any comments to what I could have done differently, let me know because this is definitely an area that I need some input on. But I think the song ended up sounding pretty good and yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye